cone up and cone down a couple of times just to try to get the clay running a little bit more evenly. Okay. Alright, so we're not going to cut a foot ring on this, so I'm going to go all the way down. I'm going to leave it around 3 eighths of an inch thick in the bottom, which you could check with your pin tool. I'm not going to. One hand on top of the other. Nothing going on on the outside. My thumb's just there, but it's not doing anything. It's all just my fingertips on the inside, dragging that clay out. Not gonna go too wide, because I want it quite narrow in the base. Just gonna compress that a little bit. It's a little wider than it's eventually gonna be, because now we're going to collar it in, so I'm just kind of cupping my hands on the outside and just bringing that inwards and upwards into kind of a volcano cone. Just going to recenter that rim. So I'm kind of creating that profile with my left hand and then my right hand is pushing down on the top. And similar to centering a ball, I'm pushing the clay back into the center again, but as a ring. Okay, so we're gonna do our first lift. I'm gonna use this knuckle here nice strong lift I'm gonna create an undercut down there and then I'm just gonna drive that clay from the bottom to the top if there are any inconsistencies in the clay this is such a strong grip I can just drive through them um, and it compresses the clay nicely makes it strong to get some decent height all right so now we're going to switch knuckles from this one to this knuckle Again, my hands all the way in there. I like to hook my thumb over so I can feel what's going on up here. My knuckles pushing in again. And now I'm driving the clay up. Again, it's a strong lift. There's slightly less drag with this knuckle, so it makes it a little easier when you get thinner. Here we go. I'm stopping just before the rim and then lift away. I like to keep the rim nice and thick. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick collar because it's starting to get a little wide at the top here. I want it less wide than the base and it's starting to get a little parallel. So just kind of six points of contact, just bringing that in. There we go, compress the lip. And now back in again, using the same knuckle, drive that clay up. And I'm really concentrating on making it even thickness from bottom to top. I tend to back off a little bit with the pressure, the last sort of third of the pot, because it gets much easier to throw from here to here. People tend to get a little thin here. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna take the water out of the bottom before it builds up too much and starts to soften things too much. And I'm gonna switch now I'm using knuckles to my fingertips. Um, so I'm really gonna get all of this clay now up into the pot. So I plant my fingertips down on the wheel head like that, really get in and underneath it. And as I lift now, I'm gonna start pushing outwards from the inside to belly the shape of the bottle out like this. And at this point, I need to decide how much of a neck I'm going to have. You can always remove clay if you pick too much, but you can't add it if you don't pick enough. All right. I'm just gonna do another quick belly out from the bottom, just sketching with my fingers. My inside hand is shaped like this. I'm using pretty much all five fingers here, um, pushing out, and I'm using mostly these three outside almost like a rib to shape that curve. There we go. And I'm just gonna start to bring the top in a little. I don't wanna go too much because I wanna be able to fit my hand in there still. Just to help me out a little bit to make the neck later. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to using a rib on the outside. It's gonna get rid of some of the water. 
and it will compress the clay a little bit better. So I'm just trimming some of that excess off down there. And I'm gonna switch the rib to the point side down. I'm gonna push onto that with my fingers on the inside. Really concentrate on that form now. Make it nice and smooth and compressed. Bit of an air bubble there. That's because I didn't wedge enough. Okay. So now we're gonna start coloring the neck in. So I'm kind of using three points here and I have kind of a C shape with my left hand. So I'm gonna slowly coax that clay inwards. Now I'm going to throw it a little bit, continuing now to bring it in narrower. It's compressing the clay, it's also thinning it out. It tends to thicken up as you, as you collar in. You need to counteract that. Back into collaring. I'm gonna speed up just a little bit. Helps a little bit with the collaring. And then another lift. Thin it out just a little bit again. Keep an eye on that rim. Try to keep it even. If it starts to kind of get uneven, just get in there and pinch with the left fingers and then just push down with the right finger just to make sure it's not bumpy. And then back into collaring. I think I can get away with another quick collar. It's getting a little thick though. So back in with my fingers and just lift that a little bit. Thin it down, compress it. Just double check that rim again. And then again, back on the outside and collar. trying to be sparing with the water so that we don't soften things up too much. And back in again. Thin that down. Compress it again. And uh, now we can kind of play around with the rib on the outside. Let's remove some of this slurry try to try to make that a seamless change and use the other side just to get rid of that low point there there we go sometimes things down here will kind of knock out a shape during the uh, collaring at the top so just get in there and just kind of smooth that back out make it a nice continuous curve and then up here we can use the curved side of the rib just to smooth that out nicely. Again, making it make it dissipate back into the form there. It's a good idea to drop your head down periodically and just check the line that if you created and get back in there and kind of fix things. And I'm just gonna now do last little bit of work on the neck, make the spout just a little thicker. So if it's gonna take a cork, it will be strong enough to take a real pounding on a cork so you can seal it. Just going to punctuate it with a little line there. Um, and you know what? I think I'm actually gonna make a feature of the neck going into the bottle there just by drawing a little line and I'm gonna dr drop another line from where I punctuated the, uh, the top of the neck and I'm just gonna draw a line down like that. Give it a little bit of interest there. And that's about it. I think I'm just gonna use a chamois just to smooth that off a little bit at the top there. Get in there and get rid of that line. And last little thing, just 
trim a little bit at the bottom there. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna punctuate that just by drawing a line with my nail. So I have somewhere to glaze to. And that's it. Just wire it off and done. <laughs> We 